Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day two of the Reparent Yourself Summit. I'm Suzanne Tucker with Generation Mindful, your host, and I'm so excited for this day. Day two, guys. So our first day, if you notice, the theme was about the self. We were invited into seeing ourselves, knowing our younger selves, and accepting our younger selves. And today is all about mindfulness. And we are moving closer to witnessing our inner child. So I want to walk you through the goodness we have in store for day two. If you go into the summit, you'll see day two has a little summary. And then we have a little recap for each of the five talks today. So today we're moving into mindfulness, the inner child, and communicating our unique wants and needs. Today's sessions will uncover a deep sense of self, your gifts, and your challenges. The light that is you for all the world to see. So inside every day, I have a poll or a question or a prompt. And today, I want you to give little you a nickname. It might be your nickname when you were little. But a nickname, I want you to pause, look back when you were young, and give inner child you a nickname. Mine would be Bubbles. <laughs> that was actually a name I had for a short while given to me by my girlfriends in grade school. Because I love to be silly, I love to play, I had a lightheartedness about me. So look back to your nicknames when you were young. Did you have a nickname that you loved? And if not, I want you to give yourself a nickname today. I will post that right when I get done with this live in our um, discussion today. Give your inner child a nickname. We're gonna have a little fun with that. And now I wanna walk you through the day, day two. We have five hosts or guest speakers, starting with Jason and Celia Helke from Happily Family. I think it is so neat for those of us that are co-parenting or have a partner in this world and want to take on reparenting ourselves inside of a relationship to see that being modeled. And that's what Jason and Celia do for us. They are very real. They never put themselves up on a pedestal. And I don't think you can do this work if, if you think of it in terms of good, bad, right, wrong, um, being the best, doing it right all the time. They're very humble and they share their relationship um, challenges and gifts, just like we're working on today, seeing ourselves, our challenges and our gifts. And I love some of the communication strategies they share um, and how they manage their triggers inside of a relationship. So that's a wonderful talk. Number two, Hanan, um, she is a neurodivergent mama raising a generate raising children who are tri country. They lived in three countries, and she herself moved a lot when she was growing up and lived in three countries. And she had a real fracture of her sense of knowing and accepting herself because she didn't really know know where she belonged. And she is doing it differently with her kids. They're being faced with some of the exact same challenges she did, um, she faced when she was young. And I love how she shares that, you know, to raise our children differently than when we were raised, it doesn't mean necessarily that the circumstances will be different, but it's how we process and witness and integrate those challenges. So some of you out there might have been raised, let's say, in a, in a home with divorce, and it really hurt you, little you, and your child you. And now maybe you're facing divorce. What I want you to know is that it's not the challenge alone. It's how we be with it. And that is the beauty of talk number two. Also, she witnesses um, for a little child that she's a teacher and he is struggling with learning challenges and her story about how she shows up for this child, it, it has me in tears. And, uh, and I think it's how we can show up for our inner child, for each of us, no matter how we process or learn. Um, this talks all about radical self-love and compassion and acceptance. 
talk three with Hunter Clark Field, who's an expert in the mindfulness realm. She's got a, a Mindful Mama podcast and she's written a few books. Um, her work will really take you into mindfulness as a practice. And again, anyone we have on the summit is keeping it real. We don't invite anyone who makes it hard. Um, everyone keeps it real and keeps it light and practical. So my invitation with talk number three today is how can you show up for yourself today with self-care in a way that takes no time? I'm going to give you an example. Right before I got on this live, I put on a spritz of perfume, my favorite scent. I'm home alone. I'm literally doing this live with you, but I put it on for me. All right. It takes no time to, to care for ourselves, to love ourselves like we would a best friend like we would someone else. So today I want you to think of one little thing you can do that doesn't require any time to love yourself. Giving yourself time to be with these sessions today, that is an act of self-love and self-care as well. But I just want you to witness that there are ways to love yourself that don't require a lot of time. And then there are ways to love ourselves that do require us to set aside some time for ourselves. Talk number four, is with Robert Jackman. And he is so deeply knowledgeable about the inner child and identifying your core wound. This is a deep talk, y'all. And we've been building up to this talk. He's actually the author of two books on the inner child and relationships. So he's going to help us in the area of boundaries. And I would say boundaries and not holding the boundaries is one of the main indicators that we are living out of the wounded child. When we say sorry all the time for things that we have no business necessarily needing to apologize for, where does that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, come from? When we say yes, when really inside we're feeling no, that is the wounded child. Where does that yes come from? When in our hearts we know it's a no. And then pulling people that have too much drama into our lives. That is the wounded child. When you start loving that little person inside, you'll find that you're going to source more support and less drama in the way of your relationship in your life. So I, I cannot recommend talk number four with Robert Jackman more. I think it is so powerful. And the last one, Nadeem Saad, he is the head of a company in the UK that is focused on emotional intelligence and does a lot of trainings with families. And I love his share from the dad perspective of how he was raised authoritatively and he thought love was overpowering and controlling. And he shares his wake up aha moment when he realized that it was connection over control that was the real power in a parent-child relationship. And if you are co-parenting or you yourself are struggling with the idea of positive discipline and you think, oh, permissiveness is, you know, positive is permissive, I want you to know it is not. Positive parenting is respectful and firm. And this talk with Nadim, talk number five, is, is a wonderful one to take in if you're still struggling with the idea that you need to control or overpower or punish your child to make them listen or behave. And that goes for your inner child. Some of us aren't raising kids. But we're still dealing with this little child inside that we think we need to control or shame into doing things. So letting go of shame and guilt and fear means letting go of the belief that we are bad and we need to be overpowered to be good. And guys, we're coming out of centuries and centuries and centuries, thousands of years of children being raised through fear and shame. I would submit that we are the first full generation of adults embracing conscious child rearing. And so this is new territory for all of us. So I think you'll find that talk um, number five helpful when, when you're exploring how to let go of control and overpowering and move into connection. So it's a powerful day here in Reparenting Yourself. 
summit day number two. Um, I want to thank you for all of your kind shares of what you got out of day number one. One of the more powerful uh, shares I read was a woman who shared simply when she heard me opening day one, I said, self-awareness without self-compassion is harmful. It's hurtful. And she said, wow, just that, just that idea alone, that concept that being aware without, without compassion isn't what we want to do. We want to bring the joy and the ease to our lives so that we can share that joy and ease with others. We want to share permission to make mistakes and to be imperfectly perfect, whole and complete today, even as we learn and grow. So thank you for being here. I have, I can feel the tears just in the back there where I'm just feeling so inspired and moved by the potential that we're creating out of being here in this place together. Enjoy today. Share with me your little nuggets, your aha moments, and I will see you on the other side. I'm going to see if there's a chat function here. I'm going to say hi real quick. And if anyone has a question right now while I'm on live or want to share anything at all, feel free to just pop it in there on the live chat. Otherwise, I'm going to be saving this and I will post it for you inside the group. And again, I just want to say thank you for being here. And I'll be here live again tomorrow morning for our day three. I always do the kickoff about a half hour after that email goes out with, with the link. So mwah, sending love and light to you all. Bye-bye.